Um, good morning, everyone. I've just had some further all-party discussions on the Leveson inquiry, which have this morning concluded without agreement. I want to be clear what I've been arguing for and the next steps that I will now take. What happened to the Dowlers, to the McCanns, to Christopher Jeffries, and to many other innocent people who never sought the limelight was utterly despicable. We commissioned the Leveson inquiry, we initiated these all-party discussions, precisely because we wanted to build a new system of press regulation in our country. A new system that would prevent such appalling acts happening again, but also, crucially, a new system that would maintain the fundamental principle of a free and independent press. I believe there are real dangers in passing detailed legislation about press regulation. As I've said, it crosses the Rubicon in terms of endangering press freedoms. That is why we propose the Royal Charter approach. It is a proven way of establishing a public body without the need for legislation, as we've seen with, for instance, our universities or the BBC. And it would deliver a Royal Charter what Lord Justice Leveson wanted without the need for detailed legislation. The Royal Charter that we've proposed has benefited hugely from hundreds of hours of detailed negotiations with the representatives of victims, with all main political parties, and with the press themselves. The Royal Charter would ensure the independent self-regulation that Lord Justice Leveson recommended, while simultaneously protecting the precious independence and freedom of our press. It follows the principles that Lord Justice Leveson set out. It would deliver upfront apologies, million pound fines, a self-regulatory body with independence of appointments and funding, a standards code, an arbitration service free for victims, and a speedy complaint handling mechanism. All of the fundamental principles set out by the Leveson Inquiry are met by the Royal Charter that we have proposed, and all have been accepted by the industry over the last three months. In fact, in a number of areas, the media have accepted additional measures that go beyond Lord Justice Leveson's recommendations. These include a dedicated fund for investigations, making publishers accountable for all material, including photos, and a whistleblowing hotline. As a result of all of this, we have a workable system ready to go. Now, this really matters. Lord Justice Leveson said, and all the parties have agreed, that the self-regulation self must be voluntary. There's no point in producing a system that the press won't take part in. As Prime Minister, I wouldn't be fulfilling my duty if I came up with something knowing it wouldn't work. And I believe that what we have on the table is a system that will deliver public confidence and justice for the victims. It's a system that would introduce the toughest press regulation this country has seen and a system that will defend press freedom in our country. So what I propose to do now is this. I will publish again the Royal Charter so people can see how it will deliver the principles that Lord Justice Leveson set out. I will use the Crime and Courts Bill in the House of Commons to table the minimal legislative clauses needed to put in place a system of exemplary damages for any newspaper that chooses to remain outside the regulatory system. This is, delivers what Lord Leveson proposed, namely a strong incentive for newspapers to take part in the new regulatory system. And I will urge all members on all sides of the House to support this approach. Now, in recent weeks, those who want or would prefer a full legislative approach uh, to Leveson have hijacked important parliamentary bills on other issues. The defamation bills, the defamation bill which has important reforms to libel law, uh, the bill to introduce the Green Investment Bank, currently in the House of Lords. I cannot allow this to continue. So if other parties do not want to adopt the approach that I'm recommending, they will have that option when the Crime and Courts Bill is debated on Monday night. And if they wish, they can table their own amendments to put in place a full regulatory system, a full legislative system, or indeed anything else. To put it simply, they can back my amendments and support this Royal Charter to secure a workable new system that delivers the principles of Leveson's recommendations, or they can grandstand and end up with a system that I believe will not work. Now, the only way we can help victims is through a system that actually works in practice. And let me just remind people why I think a full legislative response is wrong. There are reasons of necessity, practicality, and fundamental principle. 
As I've explained, statutory regulation of our media is not necessary to achieve the Leveson principles. A royal charter, as I've set out, can do this. Reasons of practicality I've also set out. No system of self-regulation can work unless those who are being regulated participate in it. Most important of all, I believe that detailed legislation is fundamentally wrong in principle. It is wrong to cross that Rubicon by writing key elements of press regulation into the law of the land. It is wrong to create a vehicle whereby politicians could in future impose regulations and obligations on the free press. And it is wrong to run the risk of infringing free speech and a free press in this way. Winston Churchill said that a free press is the unsleeping guardian of every other right that free people prize. It is the most dangerous foe of tyranny. He was right. We should always defend that principle, and I will. <laughs>